Hi, and welcome to a video on how to use Netsuit's Electric Encoder Explorer. Uh, if you're watching this, you may already have your encoder. Um, here I've mounted a DS series onto a uh, jig by Netzer, but you may already have this installed on a drive or, or on a um, axis. One of the first things to note when you get started with the Electric Encoder Explorer is your signal amplitude. Um, this is the heat bar at the bottom, and you want to be in between these two little hashes here in that green zone to get optimal performance. And what that is, is it's a direct measurement of the um, gapping of the rotor. So you'll see as I push on my rotor here, my arrow is moving a little. Um, adjust your rotor up or down based on um, your specific situation. Once you have that arrow where it needs to be, we can go ahead and do a mechanical installation verification. So we'll go ahead, we'll click start, and you just want to give it a turn. Um, important thing to note here is it doesn't matter the velocity that the um, uh, rotor is being rotated at. It doesn't have to be constant. I'm doing it here with my hand. You might just be uh, spinning it with a drive, depending on what you have. You're going to see it's going to repeat twice, once for the fine and another time for the course channel. So we'll just keep going here until we get to all the 500 counts. If you stop, you'll see the software will tell you to keep rotating. So we're going to keep going. And there we are. And if uh, all is well, you'll see a nice concentric circle. Here's my fine data. And here's my course data. And we're between the two circles that um, are our uh, target area. So we can go ahead and close that. Now move on to the calibration. So you start this, the first step is a kind of a repeat of the mechanical installation verification. We're gonna do 500 samples again as the default. And you can see here, it's gonna plot the fine in the course on the right hand side. Again, the velocity that you spin it at doesn't really matter all that much. So again, you can see as these circles develop, uh, we're looking for not only the right amplitude between those green circles, but also a nice concentric circle. All right, this looks like we should pass here. And now what you can do is go down and click on Continue to CAA Calibration. Uh, in this example, we're turning a full 360 degrees, so we'll keep the defaults at the full mechanical rotation. We'll use the 12 points, and we'll click Start. This is going to do is give you 12 equally spaced points to move towards. So if you look here, you'll see once we're around 30 degrees, it'll click on continue. And now it's going to give us the next spot, 60. What's important to note is you just need to be within a stone's throw here. Um, you don't have to be exact. So you'll notice you can actually do this pretty quickly if you just watch at that continuous button. And when it becomes live, you can go ahead and give it a click. I think it's a plus minus five degree window it gives you. Um, one thing that's important is to note that the uh, shaft cannot be rotating when you click on continue. So you want to make sure it does have a chance to stop. It's not going to give you a calibration. You can go ahead and save it. At this time, if you wish to uh, set a zero point, you can. So perhaps where you have the shaft, that is where you want it to be zero. If you do, you can click on this uh, point. You might want to set it as something else. Maybe you want this point to be 180 degrees. You can enter that value here. Um, so we'll finish. And you can see it zeroed it out. And now our encoder is ready to use. Um, for more information, please uh, follow us on YouTube. Check us out on our website, evrtp.com, and contact us with any questions you may have at info at evrtp.com. Thanks so much.